Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm filming a video I feel like I owe you guys from two months. Um, I actually have been taking notes, look at me and my yellow legal pad, living my best life. But I basically had a lot of, lot of thoughts on my low buy, no buy situation and just some things I'd been writing down and yeah, it's just like a lot of word vomit on here. But I know a lot of you have been so encouraging and so kind and so supportive when it came to me doing a low buy and a no buy. And I was so nervous, you guys, because I have attempted to go on a no buy like completely cold turkey and it just isn't my thing and with the low buy too I thought I was being pretty reasonable with the four palettes a month thing and it, I don't know it's hard because I feel like I'm disappointing you guys but in a sense too I don't really feel disappointment because I feel like I have still learned so much and grown so much in the last two months on this like low buy no buy thing that I've been doing so the first point I wrote down is I decided to go on a no buy or a low buy because I needed it my collection was growing my channel was not my income wasn't growing with with it and as successful as I want to be on YouTube I can't keep sacrificing my other goals for YouTube so towards the end of 2019 I decided I finally had enough and that's still true for me because where I am at right now with YouTube my channel is growing it's growing very slowly and that's totally fine you know not everyone has like overnight success and goes viral and all that stuff so it's always been slow on my channel but that is not why I make YouTube videos. It's not to, so I can be YouTube famous and quit my job and retire or move to LA or this or that, you know? It's because I really enjoy makeup and this is such a great way to connect with other women and share my passion. And it's genuinely something for me to do in my spare time. This thing has totally taken over. There's days where I'm like, if I stop doing YouTube, like what, what other hobby would I have? Some women like to bake, some people like to garden, some people like to, you know organize and Marie Kondo and work out and stuff like that and this is me this is my thing I like to make YouTube videos and some people like to watch movies which I like to do that too some people like to play video games like my husband that's like his big thing in his spare time he loves playing video games and some people love board games so this is my thing I hope you guys understand that but genuinely I definitely feel like I sacrifice my other goals for YouTube because I'm constantly pumping money into buy makeup and palettes and ridiculous things that I think I need. So that's why I needed a no buy, low buy. Definitely wanted to kind of explain that to you guys. The next point I wrote down is some days are harder than others. Distancing myself is key. Finding other video ideas instead of first impression videos is very important to me. I have a very consistent and robust upload schedule. So it's important to me to be creative. And I feel like I've definitely achieved that. I've tried to move away from every one of my videos being a first impressions video. Um, I felt like like for a while there that's all I would do because you know I had so many palettes piling up and it just made sense and I still have so many palettes from previous years that never made it onto my channel and I really do want to be able to still showcase them on my channel so I'm trying to work on content where you see a palette more than one time on my channel that is something that's very important to me in 2019 and I promise you guys like the last few weeks I have been thinking so much about my older palettes it's crazy like I was thinking of like oh my gosh I really want to use like all my Pat McGrath palettes like I want to do a new swatch party video like swatching the Pat McGrath palettes and just seeing how that makes me feel because I remember being so excited when the original Pat McGrath palettes came out and now I have so many other like brands that make similar very blinding special shades so I'm wondering like in my head like do I really still feel the same way I did about Pat McGrath in the past and there's so many of these ideas that like swirl in my head but I'm not um, an author like Samantha March or Hannah Louise Poston and I love watching those women's videos because they're so good at like articulating and 
telling people how they feel and they make these lengthy videos like explaining things and I'm like wow like how do they consistently follow like a train of thought like that and now I feel like these bullet points reading them back to you is really making me hopefully feel like I'm expressing myself well and the other thing is too you guys should see this I wrote these at different times of the month so um, I wrote down thoughts at different points so it feels like I'm kind of giving you guys a full view of how I've been feeling the last two months so I hope you guys understand that as well this isn't just something I sat down and like wrote down everything I felt and now I'm reading it back to you it's stuff that I've been like thinking about um, as the months have progressed so the next point I wrote down is it's hard to be patient about growing a channel and it does make you wonder what is everyone else doing that you aren't doing etc um, that's definitely something I constantly battle with as well on my channel because I've seen people that have started last year, people that have started two years ago, you know, people that are pretty new to the YouTube space that have blown up and not a lot of them look like me. So, you know, sometimes it does make me wonder like, what am I even doing here? Like, why, why do I keep doing this to myself? Like, I clearly don't have what it takes but then it was so cool the other day I was talking to somebody and I was just having a conversation with them on Instagram and she said something to the effect of it's so nice to see somebody that looks like me getting opportunities on this platform and I was like oh my gosh like that's that made me feel like a million bucks like it was really really cool and so that's why I keep doing it and um, but it, it does get hard because yeah, it does make you wonder. So that's something that I don't know why I'm talking about this because it doesn't really have a lot to do with a low buy and no buy, but in a way it does because it's like, why am I putting all of this money into something that's financially not paying off at all? <laughs> So, um, and it, it's it's great because you can definitely say like a lot of people have been doing videos on like how much they make doing YouTube and this and that and this and that and honestly like having been self-employed for a while, not doing YouTube but a different career, um, I was self-employed and it is crazy come tax time. Like when I watched Samantha March's recent video on YouTube and she did like the behind the scenes and it was so interesting because she's like I really don't make that much on YouTube and I was like yeah she's probably right because of you know all those taxes that you have to pay and then I've seen some YouTubers that are like thriving so I think it really depends on the individual so on my end I'm like my gosh, what am I doing? Like, why is everyone else thriving? And I feel like I make like a hundred bucks a month. Like, you know, it, it does, it does affect you in a sense. And it affects your motivation, not in the sense of like, oh my gosh, I need to be making like six figures, but it's like, okay, I'm actually gaining negative dollars doing this. So it is important to manage your spending. And that's something that I need to be better at. The next thing, number four I wrote down is, I do try to keep my financial goals in mind because I really shouldn't be buying anything. And that's another huge thing. One of my big goals of 2020 is to just pay stuff off. I have like all these piddly things lying around that I need to pay off. And I've talked to my husband about it and he's been so supportive and literally like ridiculous amounts of money I'm spending on just like paying things off. And it's important to me and that needs to be my main focus so every time I think like oh I I want to buy something I just look at like I have like a little sheet of things like I'm trying to pay off and I just look at that total and I'm like but why you have this amount of money that you need to pay off and that's more important than buying more makeup so that keeps me very motivated number five i wrote down for the month of march april i will stay on my no buy as best as i can i can but i do want to tweak my eyeshadow rule i'm going to give myself 10 palettes monthly allowance so that actually i haven't really decided i think the four is too low for me just because of how much i love eyeshadow palettes i feel really bad because January and February I still technically failed at my low buy I I don't want to like sit here and be like oh, you know make excuses because there's really no excuses um, but I, I did fail 
<laughs> I did fail at my low buy and my no buy. I definitely bought things that I wasn't supposed to buy. I bought more than what I was supposed to buy. But overall, what I have noticed, and I have talked to Rail about this as well, because obviously he's impartial to my makeup shopping. So I asked him, I was like, honey, do you think I've bought less makeup? And he's like, I know you're still buying makeup. He's like, but I think you've cut down so much. I think you're buying maybe like one third of what you used to. And I definitely agree with that, even though to people that don't have YouTube channels or aren't as nuts about makeup as I am, it might seem like four palettes is a lot. And you know, you have your opinion, I have my opinion. To me, four palettes is not that much, especially because like there's so many cool makeup launches and I'm into makeup. Like, you know, there's nothing else that I'm as into as I am to makeup. Like I like clothes, I like shopping, I like traveling, um, but I don't do that stuff very often and I don't drink or party. Um, that's not really my thing. I don't like to spend a lot of money on alcohol. So this is like my one thing that I spend money on. So to me, I think I like all my rules. I like the things I'm not supposed to be buying. But I think if I up my palette allowance, then I will feel like I'm disappointing you guys less. So I think 10 is a good number. I think like in my brain, I'm gonna try and stay around four. But if I hit 10, like I'm not gonna feel bad about it because I'm gonna tweak that in my low buy and that's okay because I told you guys that I was gonna assess how I was feeling every two months. And right now, how I feel is that I wanna have a bigger allowance just so I don't disappoint myself and disappoint you guys. Okay guys, so the next thing I wrote down is eyeshadow palettes are my thing and I hate being limited the rest of my no buy can be summarized like this not buying anything other than palettes <laughs> so mostly true but then again i did just pick up a bronzer from morphe so yeah i think what i'm gonna do is just buy less and i haven't really quite figured out how i'm gonna police that so i do think i need to give myself like a limit on palettes and stuff like that and i'm trying to go I'm going to try and stick to, you know, not using things like Afterpay, not using my credit card to buy makeup, and trying to use the money I make on YouTube and Poshmark and things like that to paying for my YouTube supplies. supplies. So we'll see how that goes. I'm sorry if this sounds really wacky to you guys I don't know I'm doing the best I can there's so many people that have like these elaborate low buy low buy situations and I you know wanted to give myself like structure in 2020 and I thought I did a pretty good job of that but I don't think it's fair to say like oh I'm on this like no buy low buy and then constantly keep like breaking the rules so We'll see how it goes. The other thing I wrote down is wishlist is growing overall. I do feel like I have reduced my consumption quite a bit. I haven't purchased much as far as clothing items go. I've been thinking a lot about my existing palettes, which I had mentioned earlier. Um, the other thing I also wanted to mention is I had a really cool opportunity come up in March, but I can't go because I don't have the extra money to go take a vacation right now. So I'm really bummed about that. And um, it just reminds me more of why I need to focus right now. Like I have to go through this right now so that I can enjoy the future and that's okay. The other huge issue I was having was um, pre-orders and I talked about that a little bit in my February haul but I don't know what to do with pre-orders because you just never know like for instance in February I ordered or the end of January I ordered the Smoky Glow collab well this whole corona COVID virus thing happened and that whole pre-order got delayed so I haven't gotten my palette yet I don't expect to get my palette till about mid-March um, so it's really hard to keep track of that. And then, like, I got my Cleonade shadows in February. 
Um, I did a pre-order on the Terra Moon Cosmetics eyeshadows. I haven't gotten those yet. So it's really tough. So I did make a rule for March and April that pre-orders and collabs don't count. Um, just in case like I have friends do collaborations in the future. I want to be able to purchase those without thinking of my no buy, low buy. And then I also wrote down as my last bullet point that trying new brands doesn't count towards March and April um, because it was something I hadn't really thought of. If you guys have seen, I did do a video of 20 brands I want to try in 2020 and I had mentioned like most likely I was going to try half of these brands because there's not enough time in the world to try all the brands or money. Um, plus I was on this four palette thing um, and then I ended up picking up a palette um, because I was able to pick it up on sale due to Martin Luther King Day or something in January. So because of that, I think a lot of you had kind of said like, maybe I should consider adding trying new brands um, doesn't count towards my low buy as a rule and I think that's a good one. So yeah, hopefully, I'm just hoping March is better as far as like me being more accountable. I want to, you know, have these rules in place and try and really use them as a guide to being a better consumer. So yeah, we'll see how it goes. Um, I've already bought those little elf palettes because I picked up one and then it was like the gateway drug. So I bought quite a few of those palettes and I also picked up their elf earth and ocean palette um, as well as the mint to be palette. So I bought a lot of green palettes. I should maybe make a rule that green palettes don't count towards my low buy because it seems like all of a sudden I've got green palettes coming out of everywhere. <laughs> so anyway, I hope this kind of gave you guys some clarity as far as where I'm at with my low buy and no buy. I feel like it was pretty successful in January and February. I don't want to give myself a ton of credit because of course there's people out there that are doing a way better job than I am on this kind of stuff and I don't want you guys to think that I take your you know, your time and stuff for granted. I don't want to make a joke out of no buys and low buys. That was not my intention at all. I definitely was planning on sticking to it as best as I could. Um, but there were opportunities where I got to try something new or it was just a better deal to, you know, like when I bought the Jaclyn Hill palette, it just made sense to pick up the other palette too that I'd been eyeing. So, and then I bought the Mint to Be palette because it was on sale and I was so curious about it because in my mind I was planning on getting the Huda Mint palette as well just because I wanted to do a comparison. But honestly, what I've seen of those new Huda palettes, it seems like not, not a lot of people are really enjoying them. So I might just end up saving myself the pain and the the purchase and saving that for something else. So we'll see how it goes. If you guys have any questions, please let me know down in the comments. Let me know your feedback on this video. I've never filmed anything like this. It was definitely hard to read some of these points out loud. Um, you know, these I was writing kind of to myself. I didn't really think I was gonna read them out loud. So I definitely put myself out there more than I usually do on my channel. Go easy on me guys. Still very new to this whole thing, but I hope you guys enjoyed and I will catch you in my next video soon. Bye guys!